Bible school stuff in. We've got some neat little things to give the kids each day while they're here. And we got a nice cool banner to put outside. We have gotten our camp dates, which is June 28th to July 2nd. I almost said August 28th and that's not right. <laughs> so June 28th to August 2nd, we will have 25 slots to fill kids are going so whether they like it or not <laughs> Camp is fun. and so BBS will be August 9th to the 13th so that'll give us time to prepare and transition them from camp to BBS hopefully into a new program that we're looking to start in September on that note we do have a short core council update briefing meeting after church today. And we are still looking for the items listed on the back of the program for BBS. Anything 80s music related, cassettes, VHSs, any old boom boxes, anything you can imagine that you just don't want around in your house anymore and wouldn't mind if it got painted a neon color, <laughs> we will take off your hands. So next is the call to worship slash opening prayer this morning. From Ecclesiastes, I can never say that word, sorry. Chapter 50, 22 to 24. It says, and now bless the God of all who everywhere works great wonders, who fosters our growth from birth and deals with us according to his mercy. May he give us, this is me. May he give us gladness of heart and may there be peace in our days in Israel. As in the days of old, may he entrust to us his mercy and may he deliver us in our days. Let us pray. Lord, now we come into your worship, and now we are gathered as one. And now we turn our hearts, and now we bless the God of all, who everywhere works great wonders. Great God, we, have long, we long for your deliverance from your, the world's sorrows and troubles. In your mercy, 
Give us gladness and peace. Amen.
Good morning, all. Good morning. And it's time to praise the Lord and share our prayers together. I was thinking this morning as we were singing, I'm a child of God, I had a conversation with um, Micah earlier, I think last week or the week before, and he said to me, wouldn't it be cool if I was the son of Steph Curry? And I said, well, I guess that would be cool. And I said, what would be so cool about that? Think of how much money he has. I could have a big room. I could have this big house and all these rooms, and I could make all this uh, gaming room that I want, have all the stuff in it. And then this morning, we were singing the words, I'm a child of God, and in my father's house, there's a place for me. We might look at the riches of the world. Sometimes they're harder to see these days. <laughs> But look at the riches of the world and all the, the things that people want and need and have. But in my Father's house, there's a place for me. And one day we will receive the many blessings that are, are waiting for us, um, our future and our hope. And um, I said, yeah, Steph Curry would be cool to have as a dad. But to have God as your Heavenly Father is a blessing that can't even begin to compare with Steph or any of those other um, sports people or... Um, heroes that we worship. So I'm glad today and thankful in singing that song. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I'm who he says I am. And sometimes in the morning we have to look in the mirror and say that to ourselves because sometimes when we get up in the morning or we face the day, we don't feel quite like that. But that's what God says to us. We are his children. I woke up this morning with a, a song on my heart and on my mind and um, song we used to sing many years ago, Jesus, tender lover of my soul, partner of my sins and friend indeed, keeper of the garden of my heart, Jesus, thou art everything to me. What to me are all the joys of earth? What to me is every sight I see, save the sight of thee, O friend of mine, Jesus, thou art everything to me. Here I lay me at thy bleeding feet, Deepest homage now I give to thee. Hear the whispered love within my soul. Jesus, thou art everything to me. Jesus, thou art everything to me. All my lasting joys are found in thee. Jesus, thou art everything to me. I thank God this morning and praise him for the blessings that he has given to me. And, um, if you would like to share a time of praise this morning, I'd like to hear what we all have to praise and thank God for. Anybody with a praise? I want to praise God for bringing me here this morning. And uh, the song that, that really got me this morning was Father Fan the Flame. And just sometimes you hear the song and it, it touches your heart. And I just want to thank God. I was hesitant on, on just wanting to blow church off this morning. So um, I just want to praise God for bringing me here. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad you too. <laughs> Any other praises? Anything good happened? Janet? I want to praise God for Kayleen because I remember her when she was in my Sunday school class and how much confidence she had in herself and how much she liked to take the lead of things. And one Sunday, I was, was a little bit, I guess I was a little shaky and didn't feel that well. And uh, she was growing, uh, growing in the war every day, I could see it. And um, I said, how would you like to do the class today? And she was thrilled. And she took over and did, took the lesson book and did the class without much preparation or anything. And you know, I mean, all those memories sweep over me of kids that I had the honor of having in my Sunday school class. Me, me. <laughs> her mommy too. And what, what a joy. And I praise God for that opportunity. Amen. We praise God for you too, Janet. <laughs> we had so much fun mm -hmm. and we were so close to the Lord many times. And I think of her out there and I know that all those memories are with Kaylee. Yeah. And no matter what, she's going to be successful and be taking care of the Lord. 
praise God for our snowstorm this week. Oh. <laughs> it was great, wasn't it? Oh. Threatening us with five to eight inches no of complaints. snow, and by the time we went out, oh, nothing left. That was great. So. No complaints. <laughs> no complaints. So praising God for that. Um, and I pray that God would open our eyes to see the blessings that, that come our way. They're not always the great big bolt of lightning, but they're the little, the still quiet voice that speaks to us. So praising God for the little things in our lives. And do we have prayer requests this morning? Janet. Last week, we, um, in our prayer time, we uh, talked about encouraging one another and um, or engaging. Last week was engaging. And the territorial commander has set a vision for this year and um, to that the Salvation Army of the Eastern Territory would come together in one accord. And so each week leading up to Pentecost, there's another, um, topic that we're praying about. Last week it was engaging. And I hope that you thought about that last week and that you were able to, that we were able to engage somebody um, in conversation, in fellowship, and um, maybe in witnessing to them. And today the thought is um, on encouraging and territorial vision. Oops, I'm looking at the sermon here. So I I'm going to take it away. <laughs> Encouraging. Um, together we envision an army encouraged by a common purpose, helping one another to show love and do good, fostering a generous, generous and inclusive culture of reconciliation and mutual respect. And the scripture verse is, let us consider how we can stir up one another to love. Let us help one another to do good works. Let us encourage one another with words of hope. Challenges for us as the Salvation Army in the Eastern Territory. And this week, um, we have a prayer that they'll be using throughout the territory. And if you look at the prayer, I think everybody got a copy. And we'll um, pray together. You'll see indicated on there who is to speak that paragraph. So men, would you begin, please? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father everything that is true, true noble, noble, right, pure, Holy is from you. You have given us hope and a future. We live in confident hope that you continue to work in and through us. Give us sensitivity to the needs of others, to come alongside those in need, not with all the advice and answers, but as a companion to stand in the gap in your name without counting the cost. Help us to be agents of And then it asks us to think about, uh, to spend some time thanking God for those who have encouraged you in your work of faith. And we had that already this morning. And um, it's important to look about and recognize that there are people who encourage us and that we also should be encouragers. encouragers. And um, they ask the question, to whom can you be an encourager today? And make that our prayer. Let's pray together. Father God, this morning we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you because um, each and every day we need to be reminded that we are a child of yours, that we belong to you, 
and that we are who you say we are. Sometimes the world beats us up and sometimes it knocks us down, but we are a child of God and we are who you say we are. We thank you for those people that have been put in our lives through the years who have encouraged us and come alongside of us and stood, stood by us when it was difficult for us to stand by ourselves. And we pray, Lord, that you would open our eyes today and each day to see who it is that we can be an encourager to, who we can lift up, who we can come alongside and help to stand and rise above the circumstances. We thank you, Lord, for the praises that we had this past week and for the um, blessings that you have given to us. And we pray for those who have been mentioned um, in this morning in prayer requests. We pray that you would come along each, along each side of them for the people that we didn't mention by names who are heavy on our hearts this morning. We just, Lord, lift them up to you. We bring them into your presence. We pray that you would open our eyes so that we can see, can we be a part of the prayers that go up? Can we be an answer to their needs? We pray that as we continue to worship you today, that you might help us to see your, your love, that you might speak to us, that we might become the person who you choose us to be. We pray that you bless us as we continue in worship. In Jesus' name, amen. scripture is taken from the book of Acts, starting at the first verse to the eighth verse. Acts chapter 28. We soon learn that we were in the island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us, building us a bonfire on the beach to welcome and warm us in the rain and cold. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks to lay on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, fastened himself onto his hand. The people of the island saw it hanging there and said to each other, a murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to begin swelling or suddenly fall dead. But when they had waited a long time and no harm came to him, they changed their minds and decided he was a god. Near the shore, where they landed was an estate belonging to Plebus, the governor of the island. He welcomed us courteously and found and fed us for three days. As it happened, Plebus' father was ill with fever and dysentery. Paul went in and prayed for him, and laying his hands on him, healed him. May the Lord add his blessing. messes with this and it drives me crazy. I want to keep it, but I don't want it to be all bushy. Uh, so I've preached about a few topics since I've arrived here. Things like anger, patience, God's love, etc. I've said things about how God is slow to anger and quick to love. That should be a given for all of us and for all of us watching at home. But if I'm being honest, as of late, I've been struggling with all of these things just a little bit. Uh, I've let my work get the better of me, and I've let my impatience and anger take over more than usual. I've laid in bed at night praying to God to just take these feelings away from me. What is that? Is that a microphone? This is on, isn't it? It's working. No? Oh, well, I'll just carry my voice further. Uh, praying that I don't wake up angry and irritated, forgetting that God isn't going to just wipe those feelings away, feelings and emotions away. I forget, or I should say, I choose to forget that God is not a genie who grants wishes, but he is a God who grants miracles. Honestly, I've been struggling on a topic to preach on uh, that grabbed my attention. I thought about redemption, but um, I, after 
writing about three pages on redemption, I felt it was a little bit too close to Easter. So, and you guys just heard about that. So I opted out of that one. And then I thought about anger, but I've already preached on that. Uh, the same with patience as well. So I thought about it a little bit more. And what do the people want to hear? I kept asking myself that. What does everybody want to hear? What do I think needs to be heard? Then as I was thinking about all of this, it kind of clicked. I wasn't thinking about preaching the word of God at all. I was thinking about myself and what I would want to hear. I was only thinking about myself and that's what I continued to keep hearing. The words patience, peace, and kindness kept ringing in my head. The word kindness kept ringing louder and louder. So I took that as a sign. Kindness. The world would be a better place if everyone was just kind to one another. Better to catch flies with honey, better to catch flies with honey than with vinegar. What is that scripture we hear all the time at church? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forebodance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now I understand that I may have touched on the topic of kindness in some of the sermons before, but it's never been the main topic. Reading some other sermons and testimonies, there is a factor here that I find, or I thought to be a little bit unusual. The idea that kindness is unusual or rare. Even in the scriptures, Paul finds that there is an unusual kindness given to him. So, I began to think about this a little bit more. I begin to dig deeper. Why is kindness rare? Or why is something like kindness looked at as unusual? And that's kind of how I think. I know when I came to the CFOT and even when I came here to Sanford, I was a little freaked out about how kind everyone was. You hear horror stories about things like people saying, I can't deal with new officers, they're not going to be like the old ones, and then they kind of leave. <laughs> Or, in my mind, when I showed up at the CFOT, I kept thinking, I don't know anything about this, uh, and everyone's going to hate me for it. That was literally the first thing I thought of when I stepped out of the U-Haul. But that's not how it was. All of you here were very welcoming and helpful the moment we got here. And I realized really quick that it was not like that at the school either. And why, why do we think like that, though? I think some of you may know by now that I like using descriptions and definitions. Kindness is defined as the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. When reading that, you would think that it would be something that people would just find very easy to do, but that might not be the case for everybody. We've all heard the saying, kill them with kindness. At least I heard it a lot when we worked at Walmart. <laughs> Someone's irritating you, kill them with kindness. But now that, I'm, now that I am not there anymore, and I don't relish killing anybody, I want to change that saying for myself by saying, bless them with kindness. Isn't that what Jesus did for everyone he came into contact with? He was honest with people, which would make him, in my eyes, considerate. Yes, even in the temple, when he flipped the table, and told people what they were doing wrong and why. He was honest, but they challenged him a bit more. In scripture, it says, Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of money changers and, be and benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in a temple and healed them. But when the chief priests and teachers of the law saw wonderful thing, the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what those children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants, you Lord have called forth your praise? He tells them that the children are praising the Lord. He's being honest and he's not and not even in a brutal way, at least to me, but in a teaching way. 
That shows kindness, especially in an unusual circumstance. I think as parents, we too show kindness to our children all the time, even in, an un even in unusual times. You could be in a bad mood or your kids are just not listening to you. How could you handle that? You could go with the what might be a first reaction and snap, or you could be like Jesus and be patient and kind. For example, every morning around 5.30, to get the kids ready for school, I wake them up around six. I'm usually up by around five, but I start waking them up between 5.30 and six o'clock. And then I tell them to get dressed, get something to eat, and make sure you're ready for school. Do they do this 100% of the time? No. <laughs> now how could I handle this? Well, even better, I will tell you how I've handled this. Sean, I don't normally have a problem with. I wake him up, tell him it's time to get ready for school, and he slowly gets going. Usually he kind of crawls out of bed and he's taking forever, but he does get going. Bella, on the other hand, she doesn't want to get up and she never has anything to wear. So, I have a bit of a harder time with her. Now there are days where I'm patient, or I should say moments where I'm patient. 6.30, I'm patient, and I tell her to get up and get dressed. Then if I check on her at seven, and she's still not ready, I've been known to go one of two ways. I have gone that impatient and irritated route, and I've gone the kinder route. I will say I do get results for both, but the anger route is never one that I'm happy with. The anger and impatient route are ones where it may fix the problem in the moment, but it's only for that moment. But does being angry, impatient, and unkind truly fix a problem? The short and blunt answer is no, it doesn't. So if it's better to be kind and makes life easier in the long run to be kind, why is it that there are times when kindness just doesn't seem to happen? Why is it that sometimes we feel like kindness cannot be a factor? While writing this sermon, I have to be honest and say that I had a hard time not pointing blame. Not pointing blame to sin and nature and even other people. I had a hard time with that. Why is it so hard for us to be kind? Why is it so hard? Why do we even have to be kind. As Christians, the answer should simply be put, because God. That's it. Because God. I could try and find some fluffy and fancy answer, but the answer is and should be simple. Because being kind does not mean to be nice, does not just mean to be nice to each other. It means to be patient as God is with us. It means to be forgiving as God is with us. It means to show compassion as God does with us. To be kind, we have to remember, and this is a little bit of a side note, we need to be kind with ourselves too, not just with others. How can we expect to show compassion, forgiveness, and patience to others if we're not willing to do that with ourselves? God doesn't want us to beat ourselves up. Sometimes the people we are hardest on is ourselves. The people we are the unkindness with is ourselves. Would you, as a Christian, say to another person that you're not good enough? Would you, as a Christian, as an honest Christian, turn away unloving to someone in need? Would you turn away and be unforgiving to yourself? But there are some that do that to themselves all the time. We have to be patient with ourselves. We have to be forgiving with ourselves. We have to show compassion to ourselves if we're going to do that with others. Again, that was just a side note. In Ephesians 4, 32, it says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. I wanna show you this one little clip from the series, uh, The Chosen. If you haven't seen that, I would recommend it. I haven't really started it. I think I'm on episode two and there's two seasons so far. But um, before it starts, if you haven't seen it and you'd like to see it, 
It is an app you can download on your phone, and they do have it on Peacock if you have that app too. Not to spoil this beautiful day or anything, huh? <laughs> Come on. It's a leopard. Stay back. Cover your mouth. Don't breathe his air. Don't come any closer. It's okay, John. It's okay. Rabbi, 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 you can handle this disease. Please don't turn away from me. I won't. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Only if you want to, I submit to you. My sister, she was a servant at the wedding. She told me what you could do. So I know you can heal me if you are willing. Seek your own honor. Please just do me this one thing. But, but what do I tell people? Go, show yourself to the priest. Let them inspect you and see that you are cleansed. Make the proper offering in the temple as Moses commanded. And go on your way. Uh, uh. Why is an extra tunic? Just one of you, just one of you. That's enough. <laughs> Green is definitely your color. <laughs> Not too shabby. <laughs> Dallas and the creator of the chosen. Yeah, and that's all the information on it. But it's a free app. Um, yeah, it's on Peacock, and it's a free app to download on your phone. Um, in Mark chapter 1, 40 to 45, it reads A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter town openly, enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. That was the type of kindness Jesus showed to all his people. Not just the people in need, but to all his people. He did not want the glory or the praise for his acts of kindness. He just wanted 
people to have faith in Christ. Jesus showed what God's love can look like, and that love is through the one act of random kindness at a time. We can show kindness by doing small things, just saying good morning to one another, letting someone in the grocery store in the grocery line cut in front of you, pay for someone's coffee in the drive-through. Little things can make a huge difference. That is what the Bible and Jesus are telling us, that love and kindness can change the world for the better. Kindness does not have to be this huge grandstand thing. It doesn't need to be planned or strategically thought out. It just needs to be. It needs to be what we do every day, even on the bad days, because let's be honest, all of us have those time from time to time. It definitely does not and should not be glorified and expected something in return. If you're looking for something in return for an act of kindness, is it really truly an act of kindness to begin with? Or is it an, uh, uh, or is it an act to fill your pride? Would it be nice to be treated with kindness in return? Of course, but that's not why we should do it. In closing, and as the song plays, I would like for us to think about this. Honestly, think about it. What would the world our world right now be like if we showed a random act of kindness to someone at least once a day. If we stopped and took a breath and acted in kindness instead of hostility. If we loved thy neighbor as ourselves. Or if we loved ourselves and treated ourselves with the kindness that our Lord and Savior has done to us. Think about that this morning and pray on that as the song plays. And if you're still, if you're part of Core Castle, that happens in like 
right after everybody else exits.